Without thought or wanting to draw but not finding an idea or getting inspiration is such a big problem. Today, I want to help you overcome it and find a solution for it together. I've gathered 13 ideas and methods and a little surprise at the end that I use to find ideas and also get inspired. And it's finally the time for me to share it along with some extra little tips now that I am back from my break. Hi friends, what's up and welcome to my channel. I'm Iris and in today's video I'm going to be talking about how you can overcome quote-unquote idea block and get inspired when wanting to create art and draw or illustrate or anything else technically but not having it at that exact moment. A quick disclaimer before we begin. This video is scripted for me to not miss anything. I've added subtitles to it as well. Through the video, I will share tips that have worked for me in the past few years of me making art and creating seriously. They may or may not work for you, but I really recommend watching the whole thing since these have worked for some of my friends as well when they needed my help in this kind of inspiration or idea block situation. Also, the speed paint in the background is a piece of a girl who found a treasure of ideas, which is related to this video since I hope one day you can also get to find that treasure. So now let's get started for real this time. This video is split into four sections, each containing different tips. Each tip has its own timestamp and they are all in the end of the description box. The first section is all about general tips and you can do them right now easily and quickly. My first tip for you is to create a vision board or a mood board. A vision board is a board with things that describe your vision and your dream for something. It's a collage of images, pictures and affirmations of your dreams and desires, designed to serve as a source of inspiration and motivation, according to Wikipedia. Essentially, a vision board can be assembled physically and digitally according to your needs and what you want to do. And as for an artist's perspective, you should collect the things that you would you would like to combine and turn into your piece no matter what media you use and whatever you are going to do you should try to make the board be a tangible and aesthetically pleasing reminder of where you're heading in the creation according to mindbodygreen.com here are some examples of vision boards i created back in november 2020 if you want to use them they are in my pinterest which is linked below <music> Tip number two is to try a random challenge or a draw the scene style and kind of get out of what you're used to. Just get out of your comfort zone. There's so many challenges online and you can pick whatever you want. I have many videos of challenges from last year and many are going to come in the future. I'll add many of them to the surprise at the end of the video. And of course, if you want, you can subscribe to see my future ones. And obviously, you can also always Google our challenges whenever you want. <laughs> My next tip for you, tip number three, is to always write down ideas that come to your mind. This is going to be helping you to keep ideas for these moments of no inspiration or ideas. It is a bit more of a long-term tip, but at least in my case, I actually have ideas and call it not having ideas since I can't pick one out of the many. So if I write everything down, sometimes I'll have an easier time picking one and you can just search for ideas and write all of them down in order to keep them for next time and of course use some of them maybe now. I heard this one many times and I'm sure you did too, but you might need to try something new and experiment. Many times that we don't feel inspired by an idea we will just become kind of depressed for a tiny bit since we don't have the inspiration but do want to create. So in those times, experimenting can bring back your motivation. I've done this so many times. For example, drawing a dude when not being inspired to draw a girl, which to think about it, I should work on it on my sketchbook soon anyway, which by the way, since I wrote the script, I have done a little bit of that but still have to continue. 
Anyway, that small change and something uh, kinda still new to me helps me improve. You may have to experiment to improve since if you stay with only one thing um, you go for, eventually you will run out of options and obviously run out of inspiration uh, and won't really know how to start a new thing without trying it once in a while. So the little do drawing every six months or so helps me change my style of drawing girls to fit with my dude drawing properly. So just experiment. This is basic, but you gotta practice what you already know. It's kind of the opposite of the previous tip, but when you feel like you gotta just draw or create something you have already done many times before, you gotta go for it. This actually is very important, especially if you mix tip 4 and this one aka tip 5 together, cause when you mix them up properly, you don't get bored and have good proportions of the development steps to your art style and to your artistic journey. Don't always experiment and then be inconsistent, but also don't always do the same thing. I can promise it will develop your skills slowly but surely. And it will be a lot more enjoyable. Final thing before getting to the next section. You can use a color palette. Just take a few colors that go together or not, that you pick or find online, and that's it. Base a drawing on it. You can use color palettes as a kind of vision board too and you can turn a picture into a color palette by using a filter in your program. I actually found a post randomly scrolling on Instagram to get a color palette from a picture. I use Photoshop so you can go to filter, pixelate, crystallize, but you can use also all the ways that I found for other programs for you to use. Also many color palettes are available online on sites like Pinterest and you can do a little challenge with your friends where you pick maybe a couple of colors for each other to base a drawing about. And I've actually done it with my friends uh, a couple of times in life and it's a lot of fun. I've also done like the three color challenge which is a lot of fun and yeah. <laughs> Next up, the second section is all about references. This is a bit more time consuming since I find the reference I want after quite a bit of searching, but it might just be me and also I'm a perfectionist. Still life is such a classic for knowing things to be taught in art classes. To be honest, I don't go to art classes, but I've heard this so many times from real people and saw it in many many movies and decided to try still life myself a few times. So what is still life? It is anything that does not move or is dead. Many painters and sculptors are doing still lives and when you draw or recreate real things that you see, it contributes since you can learn the shapes that build the item. So for example, a bowl uh, can consist, at least in my eyes, from half a circle and a squashed oval, but for a different person it will look completely different. So this is very special since every person has their own perspective on things and that is why when two people try to recreate the same thing, it turns out differently, which is very very cool. And you might think it's stupid and might not think that. But it also helps you improve and get out of your comfort zone and of course, you can enjoy it. Every time I'm on a trip, I take hundreds of photos of just landscapes to remember them and where I've been and also draw them. I don't end up drawing the landscape most of the time due to my laziness, but it does help to learn how the world looks and what it is built from. Nature is a gift and if we see what it really is through trying to create it and recreate it on our own, I think we'll be able to understand and see the little details and appreciate it a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot more um, and develop our skills in the same time, which is obviously nice. Oh. 
Tip 9 in the last from this section is to use Pinterest, Instagram and of course any other image sharing platform, possibly Tumblr, DeviantArt or whatever you can find. These platforms can help you get many options for references of anything, whether it's poses, maybe clothing, a color palette or anything else really. When using references it is important to use many and if you have a lot of options to reference, it's gonna help you more. Before I finish this section, I must mention, you should not try to copy the reference to a T. Be creative and create your own concept out of the references. An example would be how I had a school assignment of creating a map of Earth creatively. So I found this pose on Pinterest after a lot of searching and I've switched like four concepts before getting to this one. And I developed the concept of this. This is my project. So it can really show you how much references help. I always use them for my pieces when I know they need to be finished and even sometimes when they don't have to be finished. And I hope that they can be useful to you as they are to me. Honestly, this project was so much fun and I don't have it right now at home, but at least I have all of these sketches. Yay! <laughs> I also have some long-term tips which will help you over time in the long run, but will be less of a right now thing. The third section is all about them and I hope that it also helps you and that you find it helpful. You should make yourself a fitting environment for your creative needs. In order to create an inspiring, creative and fun environment where you will instantly have an inspired vibe and that your body will just kinda know this space is meant for creation, you should do anything that makes you think, oh, this is making me wanna draw or create or whatever. It might be art that you printed, maybe plants or maybe even just your supplies of creation and a nice cup of tea. As long as you're happy with it and find that it helps you stay motivated, go for it. You can always change it as time goes. An example of MySpace, the day I started writing this script, I have actually decided to clean up my office space, the shelves next to my desk, and now I have cleaned up that mess that blocked and hit some things that inspire me, and that block of drawing that I had that day was also removed. Also, my space is built of my laptop, an additional monitor, a fake plant, a clock, my Huion graphic tablet, a cup of tea, my phone, and a keyboard, and of course a mouse for me to use my laptop. Oh. As you probably understood and already know, inspiration is key. It is very important to get good results to be more creative because that's how our brain works. Another way to get inspired is to find people or artists or whoever you can find who encourage you to create and every time you see them or their work, you get a little spark of creativity. You can find these people online or in real life and for each person those people will be different. And because of that I can't fully help you to find them. but. When you find them, you will just know it. Trust me, you will feel it inside. For tip number 12, I've got to mention that you always have to try and enjoy the process even if not really liking the result. You will be a lot more motivated if you do that. And to be honest, when thinking positively and enjoying you will for sure like the result a lot better since you are happy while working on it. So yes, you don't fully like the final thing, but at least while creating it you had fun and that is all that matters really and whatever, you can make something even more beautiful. This is just a stepping stone to get to that. The final tip for this section is for you to make sure to set achievable goals and get to them slowly but surely, one step at a time. Always make sure you don't pressure yourself and always get that big goal split into many small checkpoints. When you work like that, in actually every single part of life, no matter what category, 
you get to film a lot more fulfilled and enjoy the process more and when you get to that big goal you will know every step of the way that got you there and appreciate it this will make you develop your creations faster as well also as you noticed everything is connected and you need to do one of these tips to get to another in many many cases so think about it so hmm nothing worked so far or do you just want more ideas as a surprise i created a whole list in google docs for you to use and look through some of the ideas were created by me and some are by my random generator if you have anything to add to the doc make sure to comment it in the comments and i'll add it also i've added and linked some generators of ideas that i personally use sometimes when wanting to join my schedule like this or get just a random idea. The doc will contain challenges too. So, as I said in tip number two, challenges are available for you everywhere. And yeah, you have a lot. Now, if none of these tips helped you or you just want to get more solutions for idea block and ways to get it inspired, I found a few great videos with other great tips and I've linked them below in the description for you to enjoy. Make sure you give all of the creators a lot of support since they are great and deserve it. Alright, so this is it for the video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If these tips have helped you, please let me know in the comments. And if you have any questions, feel free to DM me on Instagram. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, click the bell and like this video. Thank you so, 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 so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!